Hello everyone. I want to make a tools video today for you. Um, I have had the request whew, five or six times over the past week and, and just again yesterday, or maybe past couple weeks, um, to talk about my Winsor Newton palette. And you all know that I used to use this one a lot, <clears throat> which is my are my 12 colors. And I I know my 12. I mean, I I'm I'm not in the place in my journey where I need to to limit my color choices because I have done um, a lot of work with color theory and color mixing, and I have a pretty good understanding of it. I'm always learning, right? But I have a pretty good understanding of it. You can give me a big palette, and I I know what to do with it to get harmony, and I know how to mix color. So um, this palette has been kind of sitting there and I'm actually going to change it. I'm um, changing it into another palette soon because I love this, this little box, but I'm going to clean it out really well and um, repurpose those. So I have been using, and as you've probably seen in, in all of our watercolor projects and stuff, I use this extended Winsor Newton palette. So this is, I was really lucky because when I ordered pans one time, um, it was a special on Dick Blick, I think. They sent me this case for free. I didn't even know they were doing it. It's a really nice case. Works really well. It's not my, my very favorite, but it's it's pretty good. This is actually my favorite, where you have these little things that slip in and out that keep the pans really firmly in place. This is great. Uh, but not many have that. And um, I would love to find bigger ones that had that, but I have not been successful. So this, this is my split primaries and my earths and then some other colors that I've added to this. And what I want to do is go over what these colors are and why I choose them. All right. The main reason I choose them is because they are transparent. Every single color in this box is a transparent, completely transparent pigment. It has no, um, there are no semi-transparent, nothing. It's all transparent. Um, do I have every transparent color that Winsor Newton makes? No. I, this is a mixing palette. So I don't have any greens. Um, I do have some violets. I don't have turquoise. Um, that's not true. I do have turquoise. I lied. Um, and I have viridian, but I, I don't consider viridian so much a green as a, as a blue green. And then I do have an orange. Um, but these are all mixing colors. They're mostly, I think single pigment. There's a couple earths that might be more than one pigment. Um, but I think that's it, actually. Yeah. So they're single pigment colors and they are transparent. And I'm just going to go over them with you and show you what they are. So I like transparent pigments. I, I'm a mixer. I, I like to mix color. Um, and I like transparent pigments. I want to be able to mix as many colors as I want to get the color that I'm looking to achieve without risking uh, muddiness, okay? So transparent pigments are really important to me. And I have spent a lot of time refining that palette, all right, for myself. So we're gonna start with just my split primaries. And, and I think you all know those by now, but I'm gonna tell you again anyways. My yellows are always dirty, you guys. I'm the worst. So do as I say, not as I do. And I need to refill my Oriolan. So my cool yellow is Oriolan yellow, okay? Um, it's my favorite. It's the only one that I know that's really, really transparent and glowing and cool. So that's my, um, my cool yellow. <clears throat> Did I say warm? I meant cool if I said warm. My warm yellow, which is also dirty... Um, my warm yellow is Indian yellow, and I've used other ones. I used New Gamboge when it used to be a single pigment, um, but I really love Indian yellow. It it just works. It just performs, and the Windsor Newton version is my very favorite. So those are my cool and warm yellow. Um, <clears throat> I have, uh, so let me show you this. This is transparent orange. It's very similar to transparent pyro orange. 
So I'm going to sneak this in here just to show you. I have this on my palette. It can be used as a warm red with a little bit of alteration, okay? But <clears throat> if I were going to just choose six, I would choose two, two cool reds. So I've got Permanent Rose. Okay, and Alizarin Crimson. And those are my two reds and my split primaries. And I just find having a darker cool red and a lighter cool red is really, really useful. Okay, did I? No, that's right. Okay, so that's, that's how I do it. If I want to make either of those into a warm red, all I have to do is add a little bit of Indian Yellow. So I just take my... <clears throat> Quinn, Quinn Rose or Permanent Rose as Windsor Newton calls it. And I add yellow to it and I get a much warmer red. Okay, and I can add a little more and make it even warmer still. All right, so I can get warm, war, neutral to warm reds super easily. Okay, with either, um, either of my reds. My cool reds. Super easy to get a warm red. All right, and then my blues are fairly standard. Um, I have French Ultramarine for my warm blue. These are all Windsor Newton paints, okay? And then I have Prussian Blue for my cool blue. All right, that, those are my split primaries, okay? So to add to those, if I were only going to choose like five five more. The, for me, they're going to be earths because I use a lot of earths and it just makes it a lot easier than having to um, mix them all the time. So my next six would be raw sienna, raw umber, burnt sienna, Burnt Umber, I like my Earths, Sepia, which is a compound pigment and it does have black in it, but I don't care, I love it. And my next choice would be Windsor Violet. Okay, so this is really my preferred 12, if I were going to pick 12 colors, okay? So everything else on this palette, I don't really need. I can do just pretty much anything with these, but I have some other colors to make my life easier. All right, and just because I can, I, I love them. So to my yellows, I love transparent yellow. Okay, transparent yellow, single pigment, really, really intense. It's more intense than Oriolan. All right, so when I want a really intense yellow, I'm going to use this one, but it can still be very cool, but it can also kind of look warm. It's a, it's one of those it's one of those really special colors. So transparent yellow by Windsor and Newton. And I also have on my palette quinacridone gold. It is a little bit browner um, and warmer than transparent yellow. So if I want a super super intense yellow, I go with this one. All right, so this is more like a cool and warm, intense, right? Really high chroma, okay? Then I go to my reds. My reds, I've got, like I said, I've got the transparent orange, which is an absolutely breathtaking, beautiful color that makes really nice um, grays when mixed with um, blues. It's really beautiful. So one good mix that you can make with this, if you take transparent orange and put it over here and you mix it with a blue without granulation, which would be um, phthalo blue. And if I want to get neutrals that have no granulation, that's what I do, okay? So the more obviously I add, the grayer it's going to be. So it can go from, it can go from browns To grays okay and blue grays so it's a really useful color to have to mix with non-granulating blues if you want 
non-granulating neutrals. All right, super useful on the palette. Then I've got quinacridone red. You will see that this is the color I use the very least. I bought it, I thought I would really love it, and the truth is I just really don't. <laughs> so I wouldn't buy it again. It's just, it's just not my color. I have used it a few times in landscapes um, where I just put a little bit on the horizon and let it float up into the sky and it does some pretty cool things. But in general, I just, I don't use it. The next one is called Rose Doré. I really love this. This color makes really pretty peachy pinks. So it's not cool, it's not warm, it's sort of a, a very delicate, a very delicate peachy pink, and I love this color. It's called Rose Doré, and it is completely transparent, right? It's just delightful. It's really pretty for flowers. Then I've got my permanent rose, which we already talked about. Then I have permanent carmine. Permanent carmine is like a jewel. It's just a lit. So here I'm going to put alizarin next to it so you can see the difference. Alizarin is a little bit more, a little bit more muted. Carmine is jewel-like. It is gorgeous and it's completely transparent. It also does not granulate, and alizarin does a little bit. All right. Then on the deep end of the spectrum for my reds. I have Paraline Maroon or Maroon Paraline, and that's another transparent pigment that's like a deep garnet blood red. Really, really useful when you need a dark red, okay? So that, that's my red spectrum. Then I go into violets. <clears throat> this is where I think it gets really fun. I love the violets. So this is Quinn Magenta. I mean, that's a hot pink, right? It's just... Beautiful, and it's totally light fast. So where Opera Rose is not, okay, Quinn Magenta is. And you can actually put it out quite pale and you get beautiful, um, like hot pinks. Very, very pretty color. That's a Brenda pink. We call it Brenda pink here. All right, next. <clears throat> All right, so that was that was quinacridone magenta. The next one is called permanent magenta. It's very different. It's more purple. So it's a lot like quin violet. It's beautiful in some rounds. So that's permanent magenta. Again, another really hot, vibrant color in case I need it. And when you use colors like this, okay, I'm going to put it over here. Watch what happens when I mix Viridian with this color. The most gorgeous sort of dusty purples. And the neat thing about these, when you, when you mix with Viridian and you put water into it, sometimes you get really cool separation when things dry. Okay, so interesting, interesting mixes with um, permanent magenta. Next is Paraline Violet. Super beautiful. I don't know how to describe this color. I don't know if, I don't know. It's just, it's just stunning, right? And it also mixes well and makes great darks. So if you had Paraline Green on your palette, I don't. But if you did, Paraline Green and Paraline Violet make really, really beautiful darks. All right. And then next, I just want to make sure this is in the right place. Yeah, it is. Okay. The next one is Quinacridone Violet. So this was Quinacridone Magenta, right? This was Permanent Magenta. This is Paraline Violet. And this is quinacridone violet. And that is another one of those really hot colors. These are intense and they're fun. And I don't use them that often, but when I need something like that, I have them. 
and they're really, really useful for botanicals, okay? Then comes the violet that I showed you up here, which is Windsor violet or dioxazine violet. It's a transparent deep purple, which for me, the main benefit of is to make muted yellows. Okay, field colors. All right, so those are everything but my blues. I have a lot of blues, so let's look at those. All right, you saw my French ultramarine blue. Then I have Windsor Blue Red Shade. So Windsor Blue Red Shade is a cool blue, but it's not quite as cyan as um, green shade. So I use this to make grays, all right, with my, with my orange. Then I have Prussian Blue, which you saw. I just want to show you the difference between these blues. This is Prussian Blue, which has just different properties, right? than the thalos. It just makes more interesting mixes, I think. Then I have thalo blue green shade, which becomes a little bit more cyan. See how they're getting brighter? So this is red shade, that's green shade, okay? Then this is my only color that is not transparent, and I do not use this for mixing, but I just use it for skies. That's cerulean blue. Very cool. Then I have Thalo Turquoise, which is super intense and the coolest of all of my blues. So the more a blue leans toward green, the cooler it is. All right, watch what happens when you mix Thalo Turquoise and a Lizard Crimson. the most gorgeous dusky blue violets that separate and do beautiful things. It's, it, it's, I think that's probably how they make imperial. Well, I don't know, but it's so beautiful. Now let me try it with maroon perylene. All right, I'm just, I'm mixing this over here. So this is maroon perylene and thalo turquoise, these deep dark colors. so beautiful, right? And it's easy to get dark colors when you start with dark colors, okay? Really important. All right, and then last but not least is Viridian. And I have Viridian on my palette um, because, number one, when you, mat when you put a lot of water into Viridian, it makes this really beautiful glaze for many, many colors. It's just so sheer and beautiful. But the magic of Viridian is when you mix it with other things. So here I'm going to take Viridian and I'm going to mix it with Burnt Umber. It's one of my favorite mixes. Beautiful, beautiful olives that do interesting things. Add a little bit more Burnt Umber. And the more Burnt Umber I mix, the more it changes. It's almost like that lovely duck egg sort of blue, right? Beautiful, it's one of my favorite combinations. And the beautiful thing about Viridian, when you mix it into things, when it dries, you start to get unusual um, separation of color and things like that. Plus, these are both easily lifted. They're, they're not staining colors, so you can get really nice effects with those. I always, I always like to have Viridian on my palette. It's just so beautiful. Another really beautiful mix is, and I'll just do it right on the paper, is Viridian and Alizarin. So you can get like a Bordeaux color. And then the more Viridian I add, this is not watercolor paper, by the way, so the more I add, I get these beautiful nuanced grays.
absolutely stunning colors. And you'll see that when they dry, they, they sometimes do sort of magical things with water pushed into them and things like that, which is what some one of the things I love most about watercolor. Okay, so that's my Windsor Newton palette. That's, you guys have asked about it, and that's what it is. Um, it's pretty great. I think, let's see how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28 colors. Twenty-eight colors. Now, another word about these. So, excuse me. Um... Windsor and Newton paints are, are my favorite be of the mass-produced paints because they're they're just consistent. They're reliable. I always know what I'm getting. They're consistent. And there's no BS, like with Daniel Smith. And I, I honestly like many of the colors better than Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith has a lot of great, unique colors. But these are basic, right? These are basic things. And I like them the best. I've tried every major brand, and they're, they're continue to be my favorite. However, if you want to paint out of a pan with Windsor Newton paints, you need to buy the Windsor Newton pans, okay? I, I buy these pans. And then um, sometimes I refill them. I didn't, I didn't have a pan of Iridian, so I refilled it with just a tube color. Um, I refilled Oriolan with, with tube color because it stays fairly moist. Indian Yellow does not. Indian Yellow turns hard as a rock and crumbles when it dries from the tube. But with Windsor Newton, their tube paints and their and their pan paints are made differently. They are different formulas. And if you want to paint with a pan, you need to buy the pans. They sell half pans and they sell full pans. All right. It is not as economical as buying the tubes. But for me, it's convenient, all right? And I, and I like a paint box, can't help it. I, I like to see all my colors like this. Um, I still use the tubes if I'm doing certain projects um, where I know I'm gonna be you know, make, doing a lot of heavy mixing, like a botanical, I use a dinner plate and I put my palette colors around the side and I mix in the center. And that's when I'll use tube colors. And then I just refill the dots of paint on the outside as I need to. Okay. But that's just a warning. Don't buy tubes and fill the pans. You will be sorry. Okay. Very rarely will I do that. These are, these are purchased, um, purchased pans. And then they're easy to refill. When you run out of one, you just order that color. And do not buy the pre-made sets. They're, they're terrible. The, the colors that they choose are not good for mixing. Um, choose your own colors and then fill, fill a, um, a tin like this or, or whatever tin you want. Okay? So hopefully this was helpful. Um, you guys have asked me a, a bunch of times and rather than just listing them, I thought it would be better to swatch them for you and tell you why. Do you see how the Viridian and the Alizarin separate from one another and make all sorts of cool colors? It's really, really gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. All right, if you have any questions at all, just ask. <clears throat> and otherwise, I will see you um, this weekend. I'm just gonna lift this so I can close it so it's not terribly wet. I will see you this weekend with a special dandelion lesson. All right. Take care, everybody.